What's going on YouTube? This is Necro Steve, and we're here today to talk about the Lithio Battle Association draft analysis. Now, of course, the Lithio Battle Association, I'm going to just be calling it LBA from this point out because I feel like I've said that enough and it's so popular you guys probably know what it is already anyways. But this is my first time participating in it. Um, I was fortunate to make it through tryouts and I actually ended up getting the draft pick number 15. So going into it, I was placed in the Zeta division amongst a lot of other killers. And of course, we're going to be using the Eterni, Eterna City Enders, excuse me, for my team. Once again, just because I really liked how that logo turned out. Now in this particular draft, uh, the only rules were that you can only have one mega Pokemon per roster and other things like some legendary Pokemon and things like that generally they weren't going to be counted as the same Pokemon. For example, Rotom normal form would be a completely different draft pick from Rotom wash form. Uh, same thing with different mega forms. If you chose Mega Charizard Y, someone else could choose Mega Charizard X. Uh, so there were a few rules going into it that made things a little bit interesting. And um, in this league, Mega Metagross is banned and you can't have Mega Slowbro and Calm Mile or Rest. So there's a couple of interesting rules there to help spice things up some. Now, the main thing I wanted to do on the round one of the draft was get Mega Venusaur. Not only is it my favorite Pokemon and kind of the team mascot, but it is just such a good check to a lot of things that were drafted in the first round. Um, for example, in the first round, we see Azumarill. Also, we're gonna see Sylveon alongside uh, uh, Excadrill and to a lesser extent things like Garchomp. A lot of those Pokemon just cannot muscle through Venus Mega Venusaur in one hit. They require at least a 2 KO. And that gives me a chance to revenge kill or put them to sleep or something. So uh, just having a nice strong backbone makes Mega Venusaur my first pick. Now from there, I wanted to make sure I chose no Pokemon that I used in the Indigo League of Legends. Uh, as much as I really enjoyed the Pokemon that I chose for that draft, I wanted to mix it up some, and I wanted to also kind of challenge myself to use not necessarily lower tier Pokemon, but Pokemon that I haven't used in a while or I haven't, I'm not as familiar with. Uh, so my second pick was Togekiss. Uh, between the first and second round, of course, the, my single division has 16 players in it. With There's two divisions, of course, with 32 players. but. In the first and second round, saw at least six or seven fairy types chosen. And as far as OU and UU are concerned, that's basically all the fairy types. So my second pick was Togekiss just because it matches really, really nicely with Mega Venusaur. Uh, it also can function in a variety of different roles similar to Mega Venusaur, whereas Mega Venusaur can do offensive or defensive or especially defensive, physically defensive, leech seed, sleep powder, uh, hidden different types of hidden powers. Togekiss can run a lot of different support options such as Heal Bell and uh, Wish, Baton Pass. It can also Nasty Plot and at the end of the day it's another option to Scarf or play around with Paraflinch shenanigans if my opponent is running a slower team that's a little bit more powerful. So I really like the versatility between those two alone. Um, now moving forward from that pick I really wanted to have Ice Shard. Uh, for those of you who watched the Indigo League of Legends, my first pick for Ice Shard was Mamoswine. And Mamoswine was actually, number one, I wasn't going to use Mamoswine because I had already chosen it. But Mamoswine was picked up in round one as well. Now as far as other viable Ice Shard users go, you, you really only see maybe Weavile and to Alexis and Donphan and Mega Glalie. You don't see too many other Pokemon utilizing Ice Shard. Uh, and that's why Weavile was my next choice. Being able to spam dark type attacks like Knock Off and also trap other Pokemon with Pursuit. And on top of all that, just having some nice, really strong ice coverage makes him a good fit for the two bulkier, relatively slower Pokemon that I chose already. Um, and of course, Weavile can run Swords of Dance. It also gives me access to a fast taunt user in case I need to shut down uh, some stall or stop some entry hazards from going up if I first see that. And then uh, also Weavile can use other less orthodox moves such as Fling and still have that stab dark type behind it. Now after Weavile, um, I kind of just had a loose game plan on the Pokemon that I wanted to have 
on my draft. Unfortunately, I uh, kind of was sniped a little bit in the first couple of rounds there because I was thinking specifically of doing something with um, some bulky water types. I really wanted to have a fire, water, grass core, similar to the way that I approached the Indigo League of Legends. Of course, I didn't end up really having that, but that's the approach I took initially. Uh, now, another type that I really wanted to have is a good fighting type, and my first pick was actually Conkledur. I did not expect him to go so fast. He actually went around one, and so I actually had to get together with uh, Clumsy Monkey, shout outs to him for helping me kind of theory mod through that some. I ended up picking Cobalion just because Cobalion not only is pretty fast, but he can run a variety of different sets. Again, having a good amount of versatility is extremely important to me in these draft situations. Um, I don't want any of my Pokemon to be dead weight, and if I'm forced to bring it, I want to be able to switch up the sets to really cater towards the situation. Cobalion can run a very simple Swords Dance and try to sweep type of set. It can go mixed with Volt Switch and Stealth Rock. Um, there's been a rise in popularity of Swords Dance and Magnet Rise just because normally the way most people deal with Cobalion is through ground type attacks. Um, so, and then also he just gives me that offensive steel presence. Unfortunately, he's just neutral to fairy type attacks, but Venusaur doesn't really care, care about most fairies, fortunately. But uh, if, when I need offensive steel, Cobalion is fantastic for that. Uh, also, his typing is such that he gives me some pretty nice uh, resistances as well, being a, a fighting steel type. After Cobalion, I really made it my mission to go ahead and pick up my bulky water type, because after Cobalion, um, or I rather the same round as Cobalion, Vaporeon, Cloyster, Starmie, Melodic, those were all chosen, and then before it got back to my turn, which was only three turns away, you saw Gyarados and Mega Swampert go down. And so all that happening at one time just made me go, okay, it's time to get my ground type, um, rather my bulky water, and I decided to go with Quagsire. Quagsire will form a, a similar core to what I had last time with uh, Mega Venusaur and Clefable, although Quagsire is much more of a an interesting Pokemon to bring. First, first of all, he's not a fairy type, so his only immunity is going to be electricity, unless I decide to run Water Absorb for some reason. Uh, furthermore, he is quadruple weak to grass type attacks, and I just didn't see that many grass types being drafted, so I didn't feel too bad bringing that. And even if he is weak to those attacks, it's very easy to bring Venusaur in on those attacks. Uh, Quagsire is another Pokemon that can run a couple of different sets, very versatile. I was looking at Xenon's draft for a league that he was entering, um, a different league of course, and Xenon actually chose Gastrodon for a similar reason. Quagsire and Gastrodon can run very similar sets to each other, but they do have things that set them apart. I just decided to go with Quagsire because I I like Wooper, and Quagsire is kind of entertaining, just yelling go home Wooper randomly. Um, but no, Quagsire with Unaware or Water Absorb will give me good checks to different types of Pokemon, and if I need to I can run Curse or even Toxic alongside Scald and Earthquake, or even Protect just the Scout. So, again, versatility with Quagsire. I like it. Now, after I chose Quagsire, um, that's when it was heading in the other direction away from me. Uh, I kind of saw a lot of people just picking up bulkier, more powerful Pokemon. After I chose Quagsire, we saw uh, Celebi and Hydreigon, and Porygon 2 and Mega Caesar and Gudra and Mega Manetric all go down in, in one draft turn. Um, and then on the way back to me, we see Cresselius and Thunderous T alongside Salamence, Terrakian, and Tangrowth. So I was just like, okay, well, I don't have a spinner. And I started thinking about a spinner at that point. And then, almost in a row, we have Hitmonchan, Hitmontop go down. And then I decided to go for Darmanitan just because I didn't really have a very fast offensive presence outside of Weavile for my team so far. Um, I, I, I just really wanted some raw power, I guess. And Weavile is very powerful, but it's frail. Whereas Darmanitan can take a hit just because he has such a high HP stat. Um, granted, he really shouldn't generally be taking hits unless it's something resisted, but he just forces switches really, really nicely. And with uh, Cobalion using Volt Switch and something like Darmanitan with its ability to U-turn, 
I thought that that made a lot of sense. Um, so my pick that turn of the draft actually was kind of out of sorts with everyone else's picks for um, that run of the draft. As soon as I picked Darmanitan, I actually went ahead and put down Donphan for the thing to pick as soon as it came back around. Because after I saw Hitmonchan, Hitmontop, and Hitmonlee go down, I, I, I was just in my head going, I need a spinner. And before that, I had wanted to do Crobat, but I was actually sniped by someone else on that turn of the draft. And so I ended up going with Donphan on the next turn. I didn't see too many team situations where I would be bringing Donphan and Quagsire. I would probably be bringing one or the other kind, depending on my opponent's team and whether or not they had a lot of setups, uh, setup users. Uh, but Donphan just, number one, uh, he, I like his design. And I know that that's not a super determining factor, but I have, typically in these drafts, I want to like the Pokemon that I'm using. Uh, and Donphan has Sturdy built in alongside a possible priority option with Ice Shard which I do like. A secondary Ice Shard is very good with the just the good offensive typing that Ice has. But being able to set up and remove entry hazards all on his own without having to take up two team slots for that type of deal is what really draws me to Donphan. Uh, so I like Donphan as a pick, especially alongside something where I, I just basically need to be whittling down my opponent's team. It can also benefit from something like Wishes from my Togekiss I, I don't like, at that point though, I did not like how my team was looking super weak to, to ice. I had a lot of ice weaknesses at that point. And so I wanted to kind of skew away from that. But at the same time, I knew I was going to get one more ice weakness because I really wanted to have a dragon. <laughs> and when I was looking through the things that had already been chosen, all of my, I think my first, second, and third picks for dragons were already gone. Um, the only one that wasn't gone at that point were I had either Tyrantrum or Dragalge, and I actually ended up going with Tyrantrum as you can see there. Tyrantrum not only gives me stab rock type attack, which is really nice, uh, just as far as how powerful non-resisted rock moves can be, but also with his typing, he's going to give me uh, ample opportunities to kind of switch in and out with other Pokemon. Uh, Tyrantrum is also relatively flexible, you can go Dragon Dance or Scarfed, or Bandit if your opponent is running a slower team. Uh, and you can have some coverage options there with the, the Fang move. So I rather like Tyrantrum's design. I haven't really used one before. So this will be kind of my first time using Tyrantrum, especially in a more competitive sense. Now after I chose Tyrantrum, um, we kind of just, I, I saw a few people picking up more frail Pokemon, uh, Heliolisk, uh, and I think on that same time, Heliolisk and Roserade and Zoroark, we, I just saw several more frail Pokemon and that actually started me to think, what Pokemon would really help with my weaknesses and resistances at this moment? I knew I didn't want any more weaknesses to ice, and I also knew I didn't want any more weaknesses to fighting. Those are the two main things that I was working with there, because at that point I already had four things weak to ice, three things weak to fighting, and I did have some resistances, but why compound those? if you don't need to. Plus, I, I wanted to get some more varied stab options. And so I decided to go with regular Rotom form on my next choice because of number one, no one appreciates the regular Rotom form. Everyone is just so crazy about Rotom Wash, Rotom Heat. Even my favorite form is Rotom Cut. But the regular form is where it all started. And that is for good reason. Being able to have electric typing alongside Levitate that's fantastic. We learned that from Electros. Then furthermore, that'll give me that fighting immunity that my team really needs, and it'll give me another Volt Switch user. Uh, it will also nicely give me options to, to play around with another status in Will-O-Wisp, and to a lesser extent, um, substitute with Pain Split. Things like that can be a little bit annoying to deal with, and Rotom is relatively fast as well at base 91 speed. It's at least faster than the other Rotom forms. Uh, Rotom can also utilize Trick to cripple walls or lock opponents into moves, take away Eevee lights. Rotom can have a, a lot of good utility for the team and he gives me some stab electric moves to work with as well. Uh, so I was excited that, that I, I actually ended up thinking of Rotom just because I didn't want to compound my team weaknesses too much. And I was also, uh, Nox pointed out for me, um, you guys may not remember Nox. I used to battle her a long time ago, but she pointed out to me that my team was leaning very heavily towards physical, 
And so Rotom helped me get a little bit more specially oriented as well. Now after Rotom, I didn't really know who to pick. My first choice after Rotom was actually Snorlax. And someone sniped that, I think, right after I I wrote it down on my possibility seat, sheet. Uh, I think that was within three picks. And so I kind of had to quickly think of something else. Fortunately, I was at work and we were dead, so I, I kind of had the, the leeway of going and doing work things and thinking about it. And then by the time my pick came back around, I actually ended up going with Sinchino um, for a couple of main reasons. First of all, the annoyance of something like a Sinchino cannot be overstated. King's Rock alongside Skill Link when five hit moves, that's over a 40% chance to flinch just from me hitting you five times. Uh, and that alone can start swinging some luck and hacks in your favor during battles. Furthermore, uh, I, if King Sinchino is kind of one of those Pokemon that I am more apt to scarf, and I like scarfing Pokemon that I know will outrun my opponent's scarf Pokemon. So at base 115 speed, that will allow me to get the jump on a lot of Pokemon, and it'll also allow me to get the jump on Pokemon that are likely to boost, like solar Pokemon that like to boost their speed. If I scarf a Sinchino, I still have maybe a way to, to get around those situations. Um, Sinchino also will give me some secondary coverage and just a really powerful normal type attack. I feel like uh, when I was looking at my own team coverage, I didn't have that many things that resisted normal and I was looking at other teams and they didn't either. There weren't that many ghosts being used, so not a lot of immunities. And of course, steel types are popular, but that's why I had Darmanitan. Um, and Sinchino also fit nicely in with uh, another possible Pokemon to use U-Turn. Uh, just being able to have a lot of flexibility with each one of the Pokemon on my team was relatively important to me. So that's the whole team. Those are the explanations for why I chose whom I chose. And I'm actually really excited about this team. I've bred most of them. Um, yeah, at this point I've bred most of them. There are a few more sets for a couple of them that I want to do. But for, for most of these Pokemon, they are good to go. And I actually just caught a brand new Cobalion. Uh, shout outs to Nate on Twitter for helping me out with another Venusaur set. I think I have like 15 different Venusaur. And he helped me get my hands on a modest one with HP Fire. And I actually just bred another one that's modest with HP Fire. So that is fantastic. And if you ever want to go battle him, definitely go check him out on Twitter. I believe his handle is at Nate T underscore. So N A T E T E A. But I've battled him a few times too. Feel really good. And I'm happy to have support. As we move forward with the league, I will. Um, do my best to make time to do analysis for the matchups before each match so you guys can kind of know my thinking before each match and then we'll have the battle and then I'll do a post match narration talking about where I thought I made mistakes and where I thought I played well and how I think I'm going to prepare for the next match so if you guys have anything you want me to discuss specifically when we're dealing with these league matches please let me know in the comments because I would love some feedback as this is my first time participating in the LBA and I definitely want to make a good showing. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video talking about my team. And I will talk to you guys later. Alright, bye bye guys.